Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you like this watch, you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing what might be the most discussed new dive watch of 2017. With all due respects to the 50th anniversary of Rolex Sea Dweller, it was this watch, the Blancpain 50 Fathoms tribute to Milspec that had dive watch enthusiasts a buzz. A throwback to the late 1950s, early 1960s, and the Milspec series issued to French military personnel as well as U.S. Naval Special Forces. The original Milspec lends not just some of the imagery but also some of the proportions of this watch as this 40 millimeter unit in stainless steel is considerably more compact than what's now considered to be the standard 45 millimeter 50. You'll note on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist it sits easily, not just 40 millimeters across and that's at the bezel, but it's also relatively slim at 13.1 millimeters thick with a sloped sapphire and sloped bezel. Lug -to -lug this one really shows its class. 45.8 millimeters, that'll work on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference, and yet it has all the presence and persona of its big brother. The spacing between the lugs is 20 millimeters, and you'll note traditional strap tool perforations in the lugs to make swapping out easier. The strap is a wonderful piece. It's the Blancpain sailcloth that we're used to on the larger units, albeit scaled down. You can see it features central bolstering, lateral bolstering, and a monotone stitch. On the underside, a very supple rubber inlay to protect the wrist against the coarse fiber of the sailcloth. But let me tell you a little secret. Although you can't see it, this is the softest sailcloth strap I have ever encountered. It's sailcloth, make no mistake, but it feels like buttery calfskin. Blancpain went over and above with this model. Simple steel pin buckle in the fashion of the old 50 Fathoms at the mill specs and the Torneck Ravels. Moving back to the case, you can see though the watch is smaller in a historically inspired vein, nevertheless it does have the form that we associate with a modern 50 Fathoms, as well as the high standard of materials and finish. You'll note the rather squat case profile with the strongly expressed lugs. They're not blended lugs, they have a sharp cleft between case and lateral structure. A little bit of tumble home from the center of the lugs to the flanks. You'll note that there is a small crown guard acting more as a shear guard than an impact or abrasion guard. And the knurling of the bezel is deep and easy to grip. Now I should mention that the bezel action is superb. It has a creamy refined feel as you've come to expect from both the 50 Fathoms as well as a number of Grand Seiko divers, but it is precise. The detents are pronounced. It's not duff. It's not like Play-Doh. It's simply a smooth, luxurious feel to a dive bezel. You'll also note that it features the sapphire cap that was first expressed on the 2003 anniversary 50 Fathoms, and that allows the entire bezel to be luminescent. So the sapphire cap, which is both cambered with a dome-like profile and effectively so hard only diamond can routinely scratch it, is both beautiful and it provides protective shield to the full loom. Now you'll note there's also a domed sapphire with that remarkable nine on the most scale, hardness to protect the dial. Unlike a vintage watch, this one will never be scratched and scuffed about its face. You will note this is a printed dial rather than the applique dial generally featured on Blancpain divers. The Hands, as well as the shapes of the indices, are historically inspired, and there is a real moisture indicator at 6 o'clock. The original Milspec 1 featured a series of semicircles, horizontally opposed, that would change color as moisture intrudes into the watch. It was effectively a canary in the coal mine. Well, this is the same thing. It is functional, albeit perhaps a bit more ornamental, as modern seals and watchmaking technology make moisture intrusion almost a thing of the past. You will note white gold hands at center, and there will be a loom shot at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Easily legible day or night. Turn it all over, and here's something the Nageur de Combat could not have imagined back during the 1950s, and that is a hand-finished movement. This is caliber 1151, 28 joules, adjusted in a chronometer besting six positions. Chronometer is generally five positions, this one is six. Free sprung balance, silicon hairspring anti-magnetic, the two features making the watch respectively shock-resistant and anti-magnetic. 
a four-day power reserve courtesy of twin mainspring barrels, which you can see poking out from underneath the barrel bridge. The finishing is to a very high standard as you get beautiful mirrored anglage on the edge of every bridge and you can see it to good effect right here. Not just that mirrored rounded profile to the edge of the bridge, also to the edge of the rotor hand finished. There is an NAC finish on the 18 karat gold rotor, which is a sort of palladium that when layered on heavily has a dark PVD like look to it. You'll also note that the screw heads are black polished so when you you turn them flush to the camera, they appear black, and there's a gorgeous, richly textured Cote de Genève perfectly aligned across the bridges. A beautifully made movement that is also a fine instrument. It's the perfect companion to an historically evocative tribute that is nevertheless a 300 meter diver. This one is ready to get wet and wild while evoking history. Why choose a vintage watch that can't dive? Why choose a modern watch that's too large? Have the best of both worlds in this tribute to Millspec. See it and make it yours on the watch box. And we're back with the Blancpain 50 Fathoms tribute to Millspec. As you can see, this one has all of the punch of its big brother when night falls. One could even argue that this timepiece, easy to read and torch-like in its luminescence, really combines every feature a true dive watch enthusiast could want in his backup dive timer. By night, this one's no nostalgia play. This is the real deal. An ISO 6425 diver in 40 millimeters. See it on the watch box.